Hey everyone, Mo here from Smart Training 365. Lifting weights increase strength and triggers muscle hypertrophy, meaning an increase in the size of muscles due to the healthy breakdown and repair of muscle tissue. In other words, increasing demand on a muscle creates tiny tears in the fibers that grow stronger and larger as they heal. Muscle loading is required to achieve different adaptations. For example, a low repetition scheme with heavy loads from one to five repetitions per set with 80 to 100% of one rep max optimizes strength increases. A moderate repetition scheme with moderate loads from eight to 12 reps per set with 60 to 80% of one rep max optimizes hypertrophic gains. A high repetition scheme with light loads, 15 plus repetitions per set, with loads below 60% of one rep max, optimizes local muscular endurance improvement. Now that we identified what's required to achieve specific adaptation, we have to know which exercises allows optimal muscle loading to achieve the best results with minimum wasted time, effort, and injury risk. Let's say your goal is hypertrophy. You want to increase the size of your quads, for example, and you choose the squat exercise to achieve that goal. If you're using, let's say, 100 pounds, your quads are not loaded with 100 pounds. There are other muscles involved, the erector spinae and the glutes. Each of these muscles is loaded to a degree. It's also important to know that each of these three muscles have a strength capacity. The glute strength capacity is superior than the quads and the erector spinae. The quads are superior than the erector spinae. So the weak link in the chain here is the erector spinae. Here's why this is bad news. Due to the angle of the torso, and the tibia during the squat, the quads are only getting about 33% of the load used, meaning about 33 pounds of the 100 pounds. This is explained in greater detail in our free webinar, Compound versus Isolation, link in description. So you start to increase the resistance each set until you reach, let's say, 300 pounds. Your quads are only getting about 99 pounds of the 300 pounds, and they are still underloaded, but the erector spinae reach its maximum strength capacity. Now, you can't do the required number of reps for hypertrophy, which is between eight to 12 reps with proper form. The better way, the most efficient way, is to use the leg extension machine, for example. You can use 100 pounds and load your quads with 100 pounds, with a brick 20 setup without involving the erector spinae and the glutes and without having to lift 300 pounds to only load your quads with 99 pounds and without hurting your back. To keep it simple, let's say you did five sets of squats with 100 pounds for 10 reps. That means you did five sets of 10 reps with 33 pounds for your quads. But if you did five sets, 10 reps with 100 pounds on a leg extension machine, your quads had more time under tension, you used full range of motion without having to work harder than you need to, to load the quads. You will also be able to recover faster and do it three to four days later. Frequency and recovery are important when the goal is hypertrophy. This is what we mean by working out efficiently. Get more load with less weight. You know, biomechanically correct movement, anatomical movement that is ideal, is the same for everyone. All elbows bend the same. Whether you're a basketball player, or you're a wrestler, or you're a boxer, or you're a bodybuilder, whatever it is that you do, your elbow is gonna bend the same, your shoulder's gonna move the same way, your knees are gonna move the same way, it's all the same. So it's important to understand what constitutes an ideal exercise for anyone. Everyone has to have basic anatomical movement. This program will strengthen your entire body and then you can apply that strength to whatever sport or activity you do. What does that mean? It means that you will build your muscles better with less wasted effort, less risk of injury, less wear and tear on your joints. It's a matter of loading that muscle as best you can, as efficiently as you can, with the least amount of wear and tear. It's like the difference between having a, a wheel that has ball bearings and one that doesn't. It's about wear and tear, it's about friction, it's about trying to get to your goal without being beat up in the process. I'm not suggesting that you're not going to work as hard as when using compound lifts. You should keep the same intensity and drive, but with more efficient exercise selection. The purpose of this video is to remind you that not all resistance exercises are equally efficient. I'm also not saying that compound exercises shouldn't be used. You should know when and how to use them for your goal. 
I include in my programs when working with athletes certain compound exercises combined with Brick 20 exercises and other skill movement. We just have to be aware of these details to maximize performance. We have many people using the 16 biomechanical principles in their training, which makes what they do more efficient. We have people using them in group classes and helping their clients achieving the best results by simply tweaking certain exercises combined with body weight exercises and gym accessories. We have people using them in powerlifting. I myself use them with tennis players and athletes. All this help us make educated decisions to maximize our results out of what we have access to and our unique circumstances. Don't worry about research that says that this training increased 3% of muscle growth, this training increased 5% of muscle growth. They are all based on conventional exercises like the one I explained today. What you should prioritize is using the best anatomical motions that optimize muscle loading. If you simply do the Brick 20, you will maximize muscle loading efficiently and make visible results without having to complicate things or doing weird inefficient exercises. You can learn more about our training system by visiting us at smarttraining365.com. Thanks for watching. Take care.